Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Randy Powell. Um, this is going to be a bit of an advanced class in vortex-based mathematics. For those of you who are familiar with Marco Rodin's work, if you're not familiar, you should go and look up Marco's videos, study a little bit on his work. I'm also going to be having classes going up online that will start from much simpler and explain in much more detail how the math works. This is really intended to be for Marco, for more advanced students, people who are studying in the math. Uh, I've made a discovery uh, that I believe completely revolutionizes and changes vortex-based mathematics, will change the designs of technologies based on vortex-based mathematics, and I'm actually claiming to have taken this math to a completely different level, which reveals what a true whole number fractal is and how to determine exactly its composition. So I'm just going to start from the beginning. You can see I have my symbol here. Those of you who are familiar with the work have seen the symbol. It's called the symbol of enlightenment. This is the petroglyph for the equation for the most great name of God from the Baha'i faith. Abha. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick, super fast run through of how it works. Um, and those of you who aren't familiar, go check out the other videos as well. Okay, so we start with 9 at the top. We have a circle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, the 9, of course, never changes. No matter what you multiply 9 by, it always reduces back to equal the number 9. All numbers, as we do functions on this, we're going to reduce back to single digits. Why? Because we're looking at the underlying pattern. Okay? So, let's look at the first pattern we have. We know it's doubling. If I follow this pathway, 1 doubled is 2, 2 doubled is 4, 4 doubled is 8, 8 doubled is 16, but 6 and 1 is 7, 16 doubled is 32, 33 plus 2 is 5, 32 doubled is 64, which comes back to 10, 1, 128, it equals back to 2, 256, 5, 12. You can go on and on forever. It will always keep doubling. Most of you are familiar with that. You can half the other way. Half of 1 is 0. 0.5. Half of 0. 0.5 is 0. 0.25. 2 and 5 is 7. Half of 0. 0.25 is 0. 0.125, which is 8. 0. 0.0625, which is 4. On and on, you can half forever. So we have both doubling and halving. This is actually the way we're going to learn to measure things in the physical world. They always come in these groups of six, okay? Um, really based on three, but we won't go into that. Then we have our nine, three, and six. We're familiar with this. Three doubled is six. Six doubled is twelve, which is three. Twelve doubled is twenty-four, which is back to six. Twenty-four doubled is forty-eight, back to three. They are oscillating. The nine never changes. It forms an axis, which polarizes all these numbers, okay? You can look this up on Marco's video. Other thing we want to, I'm just, what I'm doing here, just to explain, is accounting for everything that has to be present on a true torus. Okay, so when we start modeling a torus with this, I'm giving you all the principles. So, first thing is we have to have unbroken multiplication tables. Okay, we have to have doubling. We have to have the halving. Okay. We have to have the 3, 9, and 6, gap space in between. Next thing we have to have is family number groups. Okay, those are explained in the videos too. They're separated by thirds. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 3 is 10, which is back to 1. 10 plus 3 is 13, which is 4. 13 plus 3 is 16, which is 7. No matter how you do it, always 3 moving forwards. When you go backwards, 1 plus 6 is 7. 7 plus 6 is 13, which is 4. 13 plus 6 is 19, which is back to 1. 6 going backwards. 3 is representing forward motion. 6, backward motion. So we're going to see this on all levels of the torus. Same thing for 2, 5, and 8. Going 3 forward, 6 going backwards. Okay? And our third group, 3, 9, 6, also separated in thirds like that. So you have to have these principles going on. A doubling and halving, a lining up of these pairs, your family number groups, all of those are going to be existent in the symbol. And 
all doubling circuits must begin and end at the same place. Okay? We have to be able to produce these circuits so they line up in order to create a shear along the torus. So those of you who have been working on that are familiar with that. Just an example of a shear, it's made out of reciprocals on this symbol. So I could use one as a control because this symbol is just using one as my control. One times one is one. If I move in one uh, on each line, two times five is ten is one. Four times seven is twenty-eight, which is ten, which is one. Eight times eight is sixty-four, which comes back to one. Okay, I can really use any number as a control on that and do the same thing, but that's one example of what I'm going to show on the actual torus as a shear. So again, if you've been working on this, you should be pretty familiar with that. So I just wanted to review that really fast, which I did. And now I'm going to move to my next piece. So after you've seen and become familiar with those symbols, you know that they turn in to something else, which is this. Okay? It's called a torus. This is just one example. It's a hand-done uh, approximation of what this should be, but nevertheless I get the numbers filled in. So how did I make this? I'm using my multiplication tables, okay? So we know multiples of one, I'm going to be going up. One, two, three, four. Okay, it's very difficult to see here, but if you look at your own toroids, you know. I've got multiples of eight going in the opposite direction, in towards the center. Here I've got multiples of four going around like this. Four, eight, 12, which is 3, 16, which is 7, 20. Okay, multiples of 5 going the other way. So multiples of 1 and 8 are my vertical axis on this particular toroid. Multiples of 4 and 5 are my horizontal axis. They make unbroken rings. We can use any multiple of 9. But the example I'm using now is based on 36 on the horizontal and 18 on the vertical. Okay, and I'll explain that further as to how that makes pattern. All right, but we just want to know that, and then I have my twos and sevens coming through as my z-axis, which is invisible, though it can be observed on the skin of the torus by how it's displacing other numbers, but I won't go into that. What I want to explain is how these numbers, what has yet to have been understood, to my knowledge, um, is how these numbers create what are called nested vortices which occur over the surface of the torus. They're explained to be uh, just like dimples on a golf ball. They're supposed to increase the acceleration of the electricity as it moves through the coil. And they're also creating another phenomena spiraling over the surface of the coil, which is called spires. That's been one of the biggest subjects which has not been understood within vortex-based mathematics. So my goal is to explain it to you right now. What is a spire? How do they actually sequence? Okay, so that's the standard toroid. I'll show you just another example so you can see if you didn't catch it there. These look like squares. Of course, they should be diamonds. Really, it should be angled more like this. But you can see here my multiples of 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then I've got uh, multiples of 8. Here, 8. 16, which is 7, 24, which is 6, 32, which is 5. So they're running in opposite directions. I have my multiples of 5, 5, 10, which is 1, 15, which is 6, 20. Okay, multiples of 4 going in the other way. And then my 2s and 7s are penetrating through the skin, coming out this way. Okay. All right, so that makes my basic torus skin, which forms into a torus. Now, Big question has been, how do we know what's a true torus? How many numbers do we need? Do we have, can we use 9 by 9? Can we use 18 by 18? Can we use any number, 27? Is it going to be, is there some number that's a true torus? Okay. No one has ever determined that until now. Okay. The standard approach to teaching the torus is more like this. See, I don't have the model for that. So the standard way of showing the winding of the coil is it's said, or the winding of the doubling circuits along the torus, 